What's going on guys, my name is Tomas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Automator to create a clone application. So what does this all mean for you? Well, let's put it into practice in this video. Let's say you have a work in progress folder that you save all your current work into daily. The application we're going to create will allow you to make a clone of your work to a time capsule, network drive, or an external hard drive. The major benefit to backing up your work like this over Time Machine is you will always have access to your files. With Time Machine, you have to be able to restore the file or files to open them. This isn't a replacement for Time Machine. It is a supplement and should be used in conjunction with Time Machine. Let's begin. As you've been watching, I've created a folder called Backup on my network drive and am in the process of making a work in progress folder on my desktop. I've placed a folder and file into the work in progress folder on my desktop. We want to clone the WIP folder to another location, preferably the backup location that we just created. Now we need to open Automator, which is located in your Applications folder. I quick key to it using Spotlight. Opening Automator, we're provided some project types that we need to choose from. We're interested in creating an application, as it is self-running and will make our cloning process easier. Choosing application, we can begin to build our workflow. The easiest way to choose the source folder is to drag and drop that folder into the workflow pane. Then we need to locate copy finder items listed under files and folders library. Drag and drop that under our first step in our workflow. We need to have had a pre-made destination folder. In my case, I created a folder named backup on my network drive earlier. Now in this case, when we run this application, I want it to replace the existing files. You can leave this unchecked if you want to keep a running backup. That being said, everything that's copied into this folder will be merged into it. So no older files will be deleted. There are some options you can select from in the copy finder items workflow step. If you check show this action when the workflow runs, our application will prompt us for a destination folder each time we run our application. The show only selected items checkbox will allow us to mess with the UI of our prompt. In this example, I don't want either. I just want the copy to happen to my backup folder located on my network drive every time, so I'm going to leave each of these unchecked. We'll finish up by saving this application as WIP backup. I prefer to hide the extension as it makes the application's icon look more aesthetically pleasing. Clicking save creates the application on my desktop. Let's run it. But first, let's make sure it's working. We'll watch the destination folder to see our application in action. Double clicking the application runs smoothly. It created a clone in our backup folder and that folder indeed has the same contents as our work in progress folder on our desktop. Since we checked the replace existing file box when we created this application, all folder contents will be overwritten each time we run WIP Backup. This option is impractical for large files because each time we run it, it will copy the entire folder each time, which could take a long time to complete. I would reserve this form of cloning for only your most important files or leave the box unchecked when we create the application. Let's make sure our application works. I'll create another document and save it into my work in progress folder. This time I'll drag and drop the folder onto the application icon. It executes successfully and copied our files like we expected. Since we're on the topic of backup redundancy, I'm going to close this video by showing you how to add multiple disks to your time machine. Like I said before, this method of cloning should be used in conjunction with Time Machine. In System Preferences, under Time Machine, you can click Select Disk and choose the drive you want to use. In my case, I already have a network drive being used. I want a local backup to execute to my Thunderbolt hard drive. Selecting Use Disk will prompt me to cancel, replace, or use both. In this case, we want to use both. If you were to practically use this setup, you would have three different backups of all your files. And that to me is a very good redundancy. If you ever want to add another or remove one of your backup options, you can do so by scrolling to the bottom of the list of drives and removing the backup disk. That about does it for me, everybody. Feel free to check out my other videos. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Uh, you can also check out my website. You'll find a link of that on my channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you all are doing great. Take care.